In this video, we'll talk about the charge on copper. So right now, when we look at copper, there's no negative or positive after it. So just Cu, that's going to be neutral. You could say the charge is zero. Copper is a transition metal. And that means when we talk about the charge on the ions that copper forms, it can form different ions, ions with different charges. So the first thing it could form, we could get Cu plus. The other one that you'll see is Cu2 plus. So in chemistry, these are the ones that you're going to see. You could make other ions if you had enough energy and you could pull electrons off, but these are the ones that we see in chemical reactions. So this one plus here, we call this copper one. This is the copper one ion. Over here, this would be copper two, and we use these Roman numerals. Note that when we're writing ionic charge, we put the sign after the number. So we have one plus and two plus here. Good to know. So how did we get from copper to this positive ion here? Well, for the first one here, for copper one, the copper one ion, we lost an electron, just one. So when we lose an electron, they're negative, we become positive. Over here, we lost two electrons. Because we lost these two negative charges, these two electrons, we get a two plus for our ionic charge. So the question is, where did these electrons here go? Well, usually they go to another atom or another group of atoms when they form chemical bonds. So let's talk about copper sulfate. So if we think about copper sulfate, CuSO4, the sulfate ion, this polyatomic ion, always has a two minus ionic charge. If we have copper one, Cu plus or one plus, then we'll need to have two of these. So we'll put a little two here, two times one plus, that's two plus, that balances out the charge on the two minus our net charge is zero. For the copper two ion, if we have CuSO4, the sulfate ion is two minus, we're gonna need to have the two plus here, our copper two plus, that works out that we have a net charge of zero, so it's just CuSO4. So you see when we're writing the names, we need to specify whether we have copper one or copper two, because the formulas are gonna be different. So to recap, if we have copper by itself, it's going to be neutral. There's going to be no charge or a charge of zero. If we lose one electron, we form Cu plus. If we lose two, we form Cu2 plus, copper two. Most of the time, we're going to lose these electrons to other atoms when we form chemical bonds. One last thing. We're talking about ionic charge here, which is different from oxidation numbers. So copper will normally have oxidation numbers of plus and plus two when it forms bonds with other compounds, but it can have different oxidation numbers as well. So it's good to note that ionic charge and oxidation number are different. Finally, if you would like to understand better about these variable oxidation states, there's a link in the description where you can learn all about that. This is Dr. V with the charge on copper. Thanks for watching.